Happy 2020 to you guys. I hope everyone has a happy new year. <laughs> Get a load of that loser. He actually thinks he's going to see any of the movies he's about to mention. <laughs> but let's get talking about our most anticipated movies of 2021. 2021 was not anything. But it is that time of year again. Hopefully this video will not become as useless as my last most anticipated video for the coming year. I almost didn't even want to go ahead and make a most anticipated list just because maybe I jinxed it all last time by mentioning the movies I was most excited to see before they were just ripped away from me. But we got to go into the new year with hope, with excitement, with a lot of positivity because... It's all we got left after 2020. Now I am going to do things a little differently here for this list because a lot of the movies that I mentioned in my last most anticipated video, in fact like 60% of them, I did not get to see. Heck, I'll list them here right now, the ones I put on my list last year that I just didn't get to see because of the pandemic. But just to keep things a little fresh, I'll only be mentioning new movies that were not on my list last year that got moved to this year. So I'm going to definitely need your guys' most anticipated list down below. Come on, I want to see what you have in mind. Don't be shy. Don't worry everybody's lists are gonna look different i'm sure there's some movies i have on my list that you didn't even think about putting on yours or some movies that are missing on my list that you're like chris how could you not mention this as well as don't be forgetting to hit that like button if you don't hit that like button there's a chance we might not get these movies next year so do it don't jinx it all right so starting off number 10 here on my list for most anticipated cherry now i found out something very scary about myself when i was making my top 10 list for most anticipated movies in 2021 almost 40 percent of these movies have tom holland in it you know i i don't play among us anymore but i would say it's kind of sus but if you haven't heard about cherry here's why it's on my most anticipated list of 2021 one it is starring tom holland he is just really becoming a great actor and really forming himself up not sticking to the very conventional roles that you would see someone like him play i mean he even just came out with that netflix movie that was called the devil all the time and that was a really different character than we were used to seeing from tom holland and with this role it's going to be even more different it's being directed by the russo brothers who brought us infinity war endgame cat america civil war the winter soldier so these are directors I'm really curious to see how they handle a movie outside of the MCU now. Tom Holland is going to be playing a soldier that once he ends up back home, he becomes a junkie, addicted to that lifestyle so much so that he ends up robbing a bank. Just even some of these posters right here get me really interested to see the performance that Tom Holland is going to bring onto the table. Number nine on my list is probably a movie you've heard me talk about here and there on the channel, and we've just grown this amazing cult following around it, Willy's Wonderland. Now, if you haven't heard about Willy's Wonderland, well, let me go ahead and inform you real quick. It is a low-budget horror movie, but it is starring Nicolas Cage, who plays a janitor at an amusement park named Willy's Wonderland that out of nowhere starts getting the animatronic puppets coming to life and going after Nicolas Cage and a group of teenagers at this place. We've already gotten snippets of footage and some really amazing posters. Really, probably a lot of my excitement just comes with Nicolas Cage attached to this and the fact that I've just always wanted to see a Five Nights of Freddy's movie and since that was taking forever this was a great replacement and with every new bit of information and details that we get about this movie it just seems like a classic fun little horror movie and that's just something that was very lacking in this year that I'm super excited to get for the following year. Number eight on the list is a live action video game adaptation and it again stars the wonderful Tom Holland, and that is the Uncharted movie. Admittedly, there was a lot of people hesitant and not sure about this movie because of Tom Holland being cast as Nathan Drake, but even right there in the description of this movie, it says that this story is a prequel to the video game. So it's not going to be trying to retell those stories from the video game to take away everything there. These are just a couple of adventures of Nathan Drake that eventually made him the man we know him in that first video game. You also have Mark Wahlberg starring alongside Tom Holland there. I enjoy me, Mark. Mark Wahlberg, we've already seen a behind the scenes where he gets that Sully stash, so this movie already deserves all the praise. Number seven on the list is one I can't believe I'm adding here, but everything about it so far has got me like, how could I not put it on my list? And that is Venom 2 entitled Venom Let There Be Carnage. Now, heck, if Tom Holland ends up starring in this movie, that is just, again, another Tom Holland film I've added to my most anticipated list. Now, the reason I say I'm kind of shocked about this is because I was not the biggest 
biggest fan of the first Venom. I thought it was an okay movie. I thought it was suitable, but it didn't really reach that potential I felt it could have had for the character of Venom. But now with this second movie, you have a director like Andy Serkis behind the wheel, who is a man that's very talented and knows a lot about visual effects. But the fact you're finally bringing in Carnage to the big screen, and as a huge Spider-Man fan, I have been dying to see that red goop all over the big screen. Woody Harrelson is playing him, and even though he looked a bit goofy towards the end of that first Venom movie, I have high hopes that Andy Serkis will kind of tweak his character, make this film very dark, because Carnage is a man that is just crazy and wild. Pair that up now with all the craziness we've been hearing about the Spider-Man universe and what they're trying to do with the multiverse and connecting everything here. That 1% chance to have Spider-Man in Carnage face-to-face -face in a movie just take all my damn money right there. Number six on my list was probably one you haven't even heard of and are like, what is this? Why did you add it? And that is The Tomorrow War. The Tomorrow War was a movie I completely forgot was announced, but when I refound it doing my research for the movies up and coming in 2021, I knew I had to add it to the list. This film is starring Chris Pratt and it is basically a new original sci-fi idea coming to the big screen that I think sounds fantastic. Basically the premise for this movie is in the tomorrow world we are set in the future where we're having a battle with aliens and we are losing this battle so the scientists of the future have invented a machine allowing them to pull people from different time periods and help them fight in this future war one of those soldiers being chris pratt's character along with the other lineup of soldiers in this first look picture that was released so that's essentially the plot right there and i think that's awesome you're fighting a battle in the future but the soldiers on the battlefield are from different time periods you can be pulling a cowboy you can be pulling a military soldier a cop that's gonna make for a very interesting group of characters right there that doesn't seem like your stereotypical oh we're a bunch of tough army guys it's like oh you're from the 70s man i'm from 2020 I've been through it all. Chris Pratt also seems to be extremely excited for this project. On his Instagram, he showed us a couple of concept art for the movie on what we could be seeing. And again, that concept art is really interesting to me. And people are complaining all the time. Hollywood is just rehashing old things, making sequels, remaking, rebooting. This is an original idea that, okay, someone will go, oh, so what, like Terminator but aliens? Who cares? It's an original idea. It's different. So the Tomorrow War is a project that better turn out good because it has so much potential and they're talking about that if this goes good, they want to turn it into a franchise. Next film on my list here, I had to add being a kid growing up with the first movie and that is Space Jam 2 A New Legacy. I really hate how this second Space Jam movie has so much controversy among some fans just because it's starring LeBron James and it doesn't fit with the sports team they follow or his ideals or they're like, Bring Michael Jordan back but thank goodness I never was a sportsman and don't care about any about that I just want to see Bugs Bunny and the Toon Squad playing some basketball I have been hesitant on some things with the project like I didn't completely fall in love with the new costumes they're starting to grow on me but the most fascinating part about this movie is that it's not really gonna center around a basketball game I mean there is gonna be a basketball game in this movie that they have to face some evil villain that we don't know about yet but for the majority of the movie it's gonna be Bugs Bunny and LeBron James jumping from different Warner Brother movies and interrupting some of our favorite scenes from Warner Brothers. So we're going to have characters like Pennywise the Clown, Joker from one of the Batman movies, characters from the Harry Potter world, and I think that is perfect for the Looney Tunes and Bugs Bunny, him interacting with a Batman or a Pennywise or whoever else they decide to throw in there. I think a lot of people are expecting this to be a basic little sequel movie with LeBron James just playing another basketball game, but is it something completely different? Different. Number four on my list is a movie that thank goodness Kevin Feige told us how to pronounce it because I would have been saying it wrong all year long and that is Shang-Chi. This Marvel movie is right now kind of flying under the radar. I know Marvel just announced a million different projects in the works. So much stuff that we're looking forward to but next year in July of 2021 we are going to be getting Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This will be again Marvel turning another nobody hero that only few people know about and turning 
turning him into an A-list, if not B-list hero that the whole world will know and fall in love with. I'm also really loving the cast that they have so far. Aquafina, I think, is hilarious. And the man they've gotten to play, Shang-Chi. I just recently started watching Kim's Convenience, and he is really funny. I can see why they added him in to be a hero in the MCU. But honestly, most importantly, is this film is said to have a lot of authentic kung fu action and as a person who grew up watching kung fu movies with his dad i cannot wait for this right here it's the reason every now and then i'll randomly look up a couple jackie chan fights in just because i'm so mesmerized that somebody can move that way and fight that way and the actor simi lu who's playing shang chi went ahead and released a little fight scene clip he did with his friends for fun and that stuff was even amazing so i can only imagine what the real deal is gonna look like number three on the list we have the suicide squad now the suicide Suicide Squad is being worked as a sequel slash reboot from the movie We Got Suicide Squad that came from David Ayer. I tried my best to fall in love with that movie and really be a fan of it, but I came out so disappointed with that film. To then when James Gunn decided to make that the project he wanted to do when Warner Brothers was offering him Superman or any other hero in the lineup, I thought okay, and seeing some of the behind the scene footage of this film just lets me know, oh, this movie is going to be so much fun, so action packed. Do I even have to talk Talk about the amazing cast you have in here like a John Cena, Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, they even threw in a Pete Davidson. But really what sold me is when I saw that shot of King Shark taking a bite out of somebody. Oh, this is a movie I cannot wait to see, son. Number two on my list, probably one of my favorite action franchises of recent years, and that is Mission Impossible 7. Now, one of the reasons I put this on my list is because I did not want Tom Cruise yelling at me for not having it there. I don't ever want to see it again! But loud outbursts or religion, I really don't understand. Tom Cruise is still a man I heavily respect in Hollywood just because of his work ethic, his ability to just continue putting himself in crazy danger with all these stunts he wants to do for his movies and with each new Mission Impossible franchise I like it even more than the last which I just don't think is possible after every time I watch a new Mission Impossible movie. One of the main reasons I'm also excited for this entry is because it is going to be the start of the end for Mission Impossible. They've already confirmed an 8th film and they said that that 8th film is going to be the last so however Mission Impossible 7 ends you know it's going to be a gigantic cliffhanger or a heart wrenching scene that is going to set up the big epic finale in Mission Impossible 8. So this is one I for sure cannot wait to see. Even just to see what crazy stunt Tom Cruise did this time that I was like, man, that dude is crazy. Number one on the list, I don't even think it should be a surprise here on the channel. Do I even have to... You guys right now are saying it right now over over in your head. So let me say it with you. Spider-Man. Three. Come on, son. Did you really think I was not going to put Spider-Man 3 on the top of my list with all the reports and rumors saying Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield coming together with Tom Holland like... This movie is number one for the entire century. Spider-Man 3 is a movie that honestly I just want to see to believe with everything we've heard so far, even the stuff that is confirmed with Doctor Strange, Jamie Foxx Electro, Alfred Molina as Doctor Octopus, just the thought that Spider-Man 3 with Tom Holland in the MCU is bringing together my entire life of just being fanboy and fanboy in the Spider-Man universe is amazing. You have Tobey Maguire from when I was a kid growing up with those films, having him make me fall in love with Spider-Man and want to look into more stuff. Then you had Andrew Garfield when I was a teenager. Rebellious, rude, and emo was probably why I liked that version a lot. And Tom Holland's version, the first version of Spider-Man where I'm actually older than and I think, oh no, don't do this to me life. My expectations are just too damn high for this movie and I know they probably will not be met at all and I'm only hurting myself by really just thinking how great this movie is going to be. But I can't help it, man. This film is gonna rock 2021. And coming out in December also, like, that is our Christmas present right there. One year away, fam. But that is just my most anticipated list of 2021. I really want to hear from you guys. What is your list down below? Is there any movie on my list that you disagree with and think I shouldn't be excited for? Or is there one on my list you didn't even think about or forgot was coming and we're like, hey, that's one I should add on my list. Anything and everything, you guys go ahead and leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3 Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.